Now that I've identified the monuments that the surveyor should visit, I'll make a map of the results. And here I've renamed and symbolized the layers, and I've also zoomed into the final set of monuments to provide as much detail as possible. Now I'll open a print composer. I'll go to Project, New Print Composer, and I'll call this Albuquerque Monuments. I'll click OK, and my Composer Manager opens. First I'll go to the Composition tab, and I'll set up my document. I'll make it letter sized, so I'll scroll down on the presets to ANSI A letter. I'll keep the landscape resolution, and I'll keep the resolution at 300 dpi. Once I've taken care of those basics, I'll go to the Add New Map button, and I'll drag a map body onto my sheet of paper. And I wanted to leave a little bit of room for a title at the top of the map. With my map selected, I'll go to the Item Properties tab, and I'll click Set to Map Canvas Extent. Now I'll add the title. I'll use the Add Label tool, drag a box across the top of the map composition. I'm going to call this Albuquerque Vertical Control Monuments. I'm going to click the Font button, set this to Times New Roman, with a font size of 28. Bold, click OK, and give it a horizontal alignment of center. Now I'll add the legend. There's a little bit of empty space here between these main streets, which would be a good spot for the legend. Since the roads are already labeled, I don't feel I need them on the legend. Legends are really for features the map reader will need an explanation for, and the roads are pretty intuitive. So I'm going to click on Major Roads, uncheck Auto Update, and click the Delete button to remove that from the legend. I also don't need the Albuquerque buffer there. I'll remove that. Next I'll add some text with my name as cartographer and data sources down here. And here I'll put my name and the data sources of the City of Albuquerque, Bernalillo County, the NGS, and NM Argus. I'm going to click the Font button and reduce this down to a font of 7. And reposition it so it fits in the lower left corner. And then I'll add a scale bar just above that piece of text. Q just uses map units for scale bars, and here are map units are feet. Therefore, to make a scale bar read in miles, I need to enter a map units per bar unit value. So in this spot, map units per bar unit, first of all I want to tell it that my map units are in feet, and then I'll enter 5,280 in here, so that my bar units will be equal to one mile. And then the label, I'm going to change to miles. I'm going to click the style tab. I'm going to change this to line ticks middle. Under segments, I'm going to change the size of the units to 5,280. And I'm going to reduce the segments on the left to 1 and the right to 2. Finally, I'll go down to fonts and colors, click on the font button, and I'll reduce the font size to 10 so it fits a little better. reposition it so it doesn't interfere with any other map objects. Once my map is complete, I'll export it to a high-resolution JPEG that I can provide to the survey team. I'll do that by clicking the Export as Image button, navigating to my lab folder, and I'll name my file Albuquerque Monuments. In this lab, I've used several basic spatial analysis techniques to prepare data for an analysis and conduct the analysis. I've reprojected data, queried and extracted data, run a dissolve operation, and used buffer and clip to identify the final set of monuments. While none of these individual operations are necessarily complex, the sequence in which they were combined allowed me to answer a spatial question quickly and easily.